for this particular, like I said, we're going to actually start tracking some drums. Uh, uh, we're going to get drum samples first, and that's one I'm going to talk about. This is probably not as applicable to Tommy's record uh, because Tommy wanted uh, more organic, natural uh, drum sound. So we're going to try to use, you know, performance take only. Um, but oftentimes with certain styles like metal uh, and more processed, when people want a more processed style sound, and you know, uh, and or and or the drummer just doesn't play consistently or dynamically, right. uh, using samples is often necessary. Uh, so it's always wise, in my opinion, just as a as a backup to to, to grab samples of the acoustic kit, and um, you know, and, and we'll go over that process also. Awesome. Uh, but first, like I said, we need to uh, you know check the gain structures, make sure the uh, we've got good, healthy gain structures. Uh, I, I'm not sure you know how many people out there are actually using Pro Tools, um, but uh, pretty much all the dolls are are similar in that, that you know I think they have like a a yellow area. I think red is usually means you're clipping out. Uh, green, you know, means it's on the lower side. Uh, but usually, you know, rule of thumb for me or whatever, like unlike with analog, analog. You know, like transformer preamps and stuff. If you if you really push the preamps, you can actually increase the harmonic distortion and, and increase right. you know a, a transient. Uh, you what's know, happening elements. sonically? What's happening sonically? Right. Exactly. Yeah, you can you can manipulate that so it's it's desirable sometimes to uh, to drive the gain pretty okay. hot, you know, or back it off to, to make the the preamp more more clean. But then with Pro Tools and with the you know with the digit in the digital realm, if you turn it up and you drive the digital realm, it's just going to you know there's the, the distortion is different in character. It's, it's more digital jitter. Uh, you know uh, you know it's a it's a harsh, less pleasant to hear, uh, listen to dis uh, distortion that happens. So uh, most most of the time, what you want to do is just get it in the yellow. You know that's uh, to make as simple as uh, you know I can make it. Uh, just get the sound on the level. Make sure nothing's peeking out. If you know uh, you know across the board and uh, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to get the, the preamp set. I'm going to drive because you know, Tommy, this song is big and pretty bombastic and, and we want some punchy drums. So we're going to drive the preamps quite, quite a bit. We've got them set up, but we're going to get, uh, we're going to get the levels going to the computer pretty, pretty you know, clean, just uh, in the yellow. Um, but uh, let's see, let me see if I can get Tommy. Tommy, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get Tommy to uh, to to play this uh, the kick drum real quick. Okay. Uh, I usually start with a kick drum. I just want to check the gain structures, and I want to uh, uh, you know make sure I've got you know I'm not clipping on the the preamp itself, and I also want to make sure that uh, I've got a good clean signal going to the Pro Tools. Uh, but Tommy, if you can just get me the 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 kick drum nice and solid. Okay. So the kick's coming through the API? Yeah, so I've got the inside kick is coming through the API, and I believe the uh, the outside kick is actually going through the uh, uh, the focus right, right? I think, yeah. I think that's how we have it wired in. Normally in my studio, I have more APIs, so I yep. just run the inside and outside. Through uh, APIs? Yeah. Okay. But like, since the API has got a good transit response, I normally, yeah. I'm going for the... Um, uh, you know, I want the depth of the inside mic to be with API. Okay. So we've got a good signal to the inside. Let me. I might be actually using the wrong preamp here. Yeah, let me try this other preamp. There we go. So the outside mic's actually going through the universal audio okay. right now. But yeah, it looks like we've got a good gain structure. Nothing's clipping on the, the preamps. And then um, you know, we're in the yellow comfortably. And Tommy's hitting pretty hard. Cool, I've got the kick good. Let's get the snare, just hit the dead center, just nice and solid. Okay.
cool. I've got the snare. Okay. Um, but yeah, just like with the kick, we're just making sure it's not, you know, we've got a good hot gain structure yeah. on the preamp, but it's not clipping. Um, and then also we're in the yellow with the, with the snare. It's important to know with the, uh, with the, uh, that a lot of times the drummers, you know, a lot of times the drummers, when they, um, they're giving their samples, you know, I'll try to tell them to, Hey, hit it nice and solid. Yep. But a lot of times drummers, especially in rock and metal, they actually play harder when they actually start playing. Right. So I use, it yeah, they start, they get in the groove and yeah. they're really killing it. Uh, so it's important to uh, double check your, your your settings. So do you leave headroom for that when you like right now? Is there headroom built in there? Yeah, or do usually you like I, yeah, just as long as it's in the in the yellow. And like I said, as they play, if it's like clipping out or you know, always you throughout the session, especially as the you know the first couple of tracks, if they're playing really heavily, you want to double check to make sure you're not getting any clipping or whatever. Because oftentimes, like it's not something you'll hear immediately, yeah. uh, especially while the live acoustic instruments are going on. So you definitely want to check that out. But let's um, do this again with the tom. Uh, Tommy, hit that uh, the tom one mic. Now, what mic is that that we're using? Yeah, this is the Sennheiser uh, 421, okay. and I'm yeah. I guess we'll listen to it, but I may need to, oh, I may need to, to uh, move the mic up a little bit. But I can run check. out there and adjust it too. If you yeah, if you can push it up just, just a, lift like it, a, same angle. Just yeah, just push it in closer to the center of the drum, just sure. to have like an inch or two. Yeah, the proximity effect um, with the drums or whatever. I usually try to make sure that, that each mic has like an inch bite or inch or two like bite on the two drum itself. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead and give me that, uh, Tom. Cool, that looks healthy. Uh, let's do the floor tom. Cool, that looks great. Uh, I'm now gonna get you to just kind of jam on the kit because I'm gonna get some overhead and room okay. uh, gain structures. Okay. And just, you can just play whatever. Looks like our gain structures are all good. So we spent some time setting this stuff up previously. Tommy's playing nice and solid and we're, we're not seeing any clipping on the preamps and we're not seeing any, any, everything's kind of in the yellow here in the Pro Tools. So I think we're in a safe. Awesome work. And it's important to know for you guys out there, uh, Tommy's not a drummer, and he's rocking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good for not a drummer. Yeah. Well, he's played drums before, but, you know. He's solid. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but, yeah, I think uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to discuss for uh, as far as this. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go over some of my the preset stuff in my uh, sure. Pro Tools. Because that seemed really easy. It, I mean, it just really... set, like, you, your mics are in the right spot. You're setting the levels here, yeah. make, checking into Pro Tools, and then... Getting gain structures are really easy. Like I said, if, especially if you're a drummer who understands, like, I need to play hard, you know, because a lot yeah. of people, like, when they warm up, they play lighter than when they're actually tracking, right. things like that. It's important to know to kind of lecture the drummer on, hey, you need to hit the drums, you know, for the... But Tommy, you know, he's been doing this for years, and he knows, you know. Cool. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, I normally start with a preset, you know, kind of a, you know, preset thing, and I'll go into Pro Tools here. 
And as you'll notice, this is a pretty radical looking EQ here happened, but um, kind of get it to where I normally start. 